In this series of videos, we're going to be discussing microbial identification techniques. In this video, however, we're going to specifically focus on staining, the types of dyes used during staining processes, and then we're going to end by doing biochemical versus serological testing. So beginning with staining, there are three different types of stains. There's a simple stain, a differential stain, and a special stain. With a simple stain, you're using one dye, and based upon its name, you're going to get simple information. The presence of bacteria in the sample is usually determined using a simple stain. This stain will also give you the morphology of a bacterium, but it's most commonly used to determine whether or not you have bacteria in your sample, and therefore you can use another identification technique to further identify the species of bacteria. Differential stains, on their hand, are going to use two or more dyes, so you're going to be able to get more in-depth information. More specifically, you're mostly going to be able to tell the cell wall composition. And so, in the differential, you're using two or more. You can get more information such as the cell wall composition. When you think of differential stain, I want you to automatically think gram stain. And when you hear gram stain, I want you to automatically think differential stain. The gram stain is the biggest example of a differential stain and is most widely used. The gram stain is allowing us to see the cell wall composition. Hence, we have the two classes of bacterial cell walls, gram-positive and gram-negative. I would encourage you to go view the other video labeled Gram Stain in order to get an in-depth knowledge of this staining process. But for right now, I just want you to make the connection that Gram Stain is a differential stain. The last stain is a special stain. And the special stain, we aren't going to focus on how many dyes it uses because it can vary. What we're going to focus on is the fact that a special stain is going to stain a specific structure. And the three structures that you can stain are the flagella, the endospore, and the capsule. So for the special stain, all you need to know is that these are three structures that can be stained using the special stain. I want to make note of a couple different things. First of all, I want you to realize that staining is an identification technique used specifically for bacteria. Viruses cannot be identified through staining. The reason for this is because when you stain, you're going to look under the light microscope at the results. A virus cannot be observed under a light microscope, so therefore, staining would not be useful in identifying it. Another aspect is that although you may only see one color at the end of your staining process, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a simple stain. For example, if you mention that you do a gram stain, but you only see red bacilli at the end, don't assume that means that you did a simple stain. Because it mentioned you did a gram stain, that means you used two or more dyes doesn't mean two or more dyes are seen at the end, it just means that throughout the process, two or more were used. So just make sure that if you ever see gram stain, again, make the connection that it's a differential stain, even if the results only show one color. So then we have our two different types of dyes. We have the basic dyes and the acidic dyes.
the basic dye are going to have a positive charge, while on the other hand, the acidic dyes will have a negative charge. Because of the charge, it's going to determine whether or not they're staying in the microbe or the background. So the microbe has a cell wall charge that is negative. And so because a bacterium cell wall is negatively charged, a basic dye is going to adhere to that cell wall. And so a basic dye will stain the microbe. Like charges, on the other hand, will repel each other. So because the microbe cell wall is negative, the bacteria cell wall is going to repel the acidic dye. And so the acidic dye is actually going to stain the background. This is all you really need to understand about these dyes and knowing whether they're charged and what they're staining is going to be essential. I would assume that most dyes are going to be using the basic dye. In the gram stain, you'll find out that there are two dyes that are being used because it is a differential stain, and both of them are basic. So just knowing these is going to be beneficial. We're going to wrap up the video now by addressing biochemical testing versus serological testing. So with biochemical testing, you're testing for the production of an enzyme. Make sure you emphasize the production of an enzyme. Just because an enzyme is being seen or used in a test does not make it biochemical. The biochemical test utilizes the fact that the microbe is going to create their own enzyme and that that enzyme is going to do a metabolic process or in other words break down something. So in addition, you should make note that biochemical testing can only be used for bacteria. Viruses sometimes have their own enzyme. However, it's very rare, and even these enzymes they have do not do metabolic processes. So make sure that you make note that biochemical tests are for bacteria only. And a big example are going to be media. So your media tests are biochemical tests, such as the mantle salt auger. Your other type of testing, the serological testing, is going to be useful for both bacteria and viruses, and that's because the test uses antibodies. Antibodies are going to be specific to an antigen. An antigen is anything foreign to the body. So both bacteria and viruses are foreign to our body, and so therefore, antibodies can be used or created for both bacteria and viruses, making this a helpful technique in identifying both species of microbes. A great example of serological test is going to be the ELISA test. I would encourage you to look at the other videos, which is going to address the ELISA test and how it works. But for right now, I just want you to make note that the ELISA test is a serological test. In these future videos, we're going to be talking about serological testing and biochemical testing and examples of each one.